Hey everyone, in this video we are going to explore the new multi-level resolution system that was added to 3D Coat 2022. You may have already heard the term multi-resolution used in 3D Coat before. That's because 3D Coat has had a multi-resolution toolset using proxy meshes rather than subdivision levels. This new system utilizes a traditional approach that one might be familiar with coming from other sculpting applications. It allows the user to take either a low polygon mesh and create higher levels of subdivision or a high resolution mesh like I have here and build lower subdivision levels. You can even use a low polygon quad mesh to generate your lowest subdivision level. What I have here in the sculpt tree panel is a body layer that is made up of approximately 10 million polygons. And if I zoom in and hit the wireframe hotkey, you can see that dynamic subdivision has been applied. Nevertheless, I can still build lower subdivision levels with this mesh. Still, it is important to note that while multi-level resolution is active, then dynamic subdivision functionality is disabled within the individual surface brushes. At this stage of a sculpt, I can add higher subdivision levels or build lower levels. Let's now turn our attention to the multi-resolution panel to see how that's done. At the very top, we can click one of the buttons to either add a new top level or a new bottom level. Prior to this recording, I had already created eight different subdivision levels and the lowest being from the Ritapo workspace. Once I have created subdivision levels, I can use these buttons to step up and down those individual levels. I have already stepped down one level and I will continue to do so until I get to the lowest level. So now I'm at level two and you can see a difference in the topology. I'll go back up one. And if you want to assign a hotkey to these, you can. None is assigned to it as of this recording. But for example, what I can do is hit the end key and then choose the up arrow. Okay. And then here I can hit the end key and choose the down arrow. All right. And that way I can just quickly with a hotkey step up and down different levels. We could also assign hotkeys to move directly to the bottom level or the top level. You can see the topology is quite different once I get to level two. And that is because I chose add lowest level from the Retopo room. And you can see the Retopo mesh here. Okay, what I want to do now at this point is perform some type of large scale operation like I normally would with a much lower resolution level. Let me turn wireframe off. If you want to toggle off the display of the retopo mesh wireframe, you can uncheck conform retopo mesh. However, take note that it will disable conform retopo mesh from working while it remains unchecked. Still, if you want to use conform retopo mesh and need to hide the wireframe, we can do this by going to the retopo workspace. And here in the top left, you can uncheck retopo wireframe. Then go back to the scope workspace. Let's go ahead and choose the post tool. And I'm going to hit the S key to turn my symmetry plane on. The line selection mode is the default and I will stick with that. Let's say I wanted to repose the hand. I can left mouse click and drag at the wrist. I'm just going to adjust my gizmo by holding the shift key to reposition the pivot point and the orientation of the gizmo. Okay. I will store the post selection to a layer so that I can quickly reuse it at any given point. And I can clear the selection. Now, if I want to come back to it and repose these hands at a later point, then all I have to do is pick selection from the layer. I think we're done with that. The sculpt layer was stored on this one. 
It's not a significant deformation change, but for demonstration purposes, this should be sufficient. And for better housekeeping, I will rename this layer. And pose, okay. And I can name that and pose selection. Yep. And make this one a little bit more descriptive. SL stand for scope layer. And while I'm in the layer panel, I may want to go ahead and create another blank layer. As I step up and down the different levels, we'll be able to see that the changes are reflected through all the subdivision levels. Okay. Let me hit my hotkey that I assigned for these level up and level down buttons. I'll keep hitting my hotkey until I reach the top level. And I can see the sculpt layer is intact for all of them. The next thing I may want to do is remove the multi-resolution data in order to show a different example, starting with a low poly mesh and creating new levels from scratch. I'll just remove multi-resolution. It's going to give me a prompt asking if I really want to do this. Yes. One important side note is that even though we have deleted the multi-resolution data, our sculpt layer remains intact. I will now proceed to hide the high poly sculpt object we were previously working on. I can hide the other items as well. And I will go to the Retopo workspace. I'm gonna turn wireframe back on where I can see it. I want to send a copy of this Retopo mesh to the sculpt workspace, but I'm gonna rename this one. I'll go to the scope workspace. Now, because conform retopo mesh is checked, I am seeing the retopo mesh displayed with a great deal of transparency, but I want to bring a copy in. I can do that either through the import tool or go to the geometry menu and choose retopo mesh to sculpt mesh. I assigned a hotkey to this menu item, so I will use that now. Okay, I see what happened. It created a child of the body layer, which I had selected. I should have made a blank layer and it would have placed it in that. But nonetheless, I went to the right hand side and dragged it to where it was an independent layer. OK, now let's get straight to it by adding some subdivision levels. I'll just click add top level and continue doing this to add as many levels as I think I need. And I can see this is about three million polygons and maybe this is all I need for now to start sculpting. And with that, we will conclude this quick look at using the new multi-resolution system in 3D Coat. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.